All right. And welcome back. Hello, everybody. As we get into week four of the semester here. So as we uh, start to wrap up the quarter, the first quarter of the semester, uh, we're looking at of the fall 2023 semester. So uh, I'm your professor, Sean Clavel, Dr. Sean Clavel here, uh, to kind of review some of the topics that we're going over this week, uh, give you a little bit of a heads up as to what to look forward to next week, and uh, prepare you guys to the best of my ability for uh, this class in uh, 202 in the future, right? So, uh, as you can see here, the main topic here that we're looking at is histology. So, looking at all of these different types of tissues uh, underneath a microscope, identifying these different types of tissues, whether it's epithelial tissue, whether it's connective tissue, whether it's muscle tissue or nervous tissue. Uh, we'll be identifying those different types of tissues, uh, being able to describe them. As you can imagine, a big part of the practical might be identifying different types of tissues. So let me see if I can give an example here. Uh, this type, right? So we can see a, uh, a few cells here that are lined up. They're kind of flat shaped here. Uh, I could even zoom in for you here. This tissue here, this these cells here, uh, you can see there's an open space. Uh, is it one of those four? Which one of those four groups is it? Is it connective tissue, muscle tissue, nervous tissue or epithelium so again just just describing each of those different types of tissues you can see that there's kind of an open space here you can see there's some uh, adjacent different type of tissue associated with it on the opposite side uh, and so what type of tissue is that this is a, actually a, the cornea of the eye which is kind of the transparent part of the eye that covers the iris of the pupil. The cornea here. If you said that was epithelial tissue, right? That epithelium, you'd be correct. Now, specifically, uh, what type of epithelium might that be? Is it stratified columnar, cuboidal, simple squamous, or pseudostratified columnar? Right? Uh, again, epithelium particularly is identified by its number of layers as well as its shape. So the shape as well as the number of layers associated with it. We can see hopefully here that there's kind of one layer associated with the tissue. It's got a flat disc-like shape. And as a result, that would be identified as simple squamous epithelium. One more for you here, kind of as a review. Uh, this is, uh, oh, excuse me. This is epithelium, right? I'll give you that hint here, there. Uh, so what type of epithelium specifically? Is it simple cuboidal, simple columnar, simple squamous, or stratified squamous, right? Take a look. Let you zoom in there. Looking at these types of round nuclei, a little bit more box-like shape. This is actually a slide of the kidney, the area around the renal corpus corpuscle, and usually contains many cross sections of these tubules with this type of epithelium. So if you said simple cuboidal epithelium, you'd be correct. Simple cuboidal epithelium, you'd be correct. And uh, here's a different type of tissue here. Could you identify what major class of tissue does this one belong to? What major type of class of tissue does this belong to? Now this comes, uh, hopefully you can see here, there's kind of a long cylindrical shape to this. There's these dark and light alternating bands and multiple nuclei associated with skeletal muscle tissue spe specifically, uh, but this is in fact muscle tissue. So just a couple of examples here uh, for you guys to identify the different types of tissues as we see here in histology. So again, uh, specifically some of those slides that you'll see in your lecture. 
as well as in the textbook, right? Being able to identify those different types of tissues. Um, as a matter of fact, let's see if I could give you another one here. Uh, how about this one here? What major group of tissue does this one belong to? Is it uh, connective tissue, muscle tissue, nervous tissue, or epithelium? Now, this tissue is uh, contains densely packed collagen fibers that are arranged in a parallel bundles. This is often found in tendons, ligaments, uh, and uh, the primary function of those collagen fibers is to provide tensile strength, so to prevent it from pulling. Uh, the cells that actually produce those collagen fibers are fibroblasts, and uh, they're relatively inactive in adults. You can actually see some of their nuclei here. So you can see kind of the nuclei there darkly stained in a few areas. And their sparse cytoplasm um, isn't even seen because it blends with these collagen fibers. So specifically, as you may know, this is connective tissue. Uh, this is identified as dense regular connective tissues. Why? Because it gets its name from the parallel collagen fibers there um, that are rolling in a wavy parallel or regular pattern. So there's dense regular connective tissue. Uh, and so that is uh, one of those types of connective tissues that you'd be asked to. So as opposed for, to dense irregular connective tissue. So what does dense irregular connective tissue look like? Let's see if I got a slide there for dense irregular connective tissue. Oh, here's one. Uh, hopefully you can see the reticular layer, that is the reticular layer of the dermis contains dense irregular. Now you can see that that uh, collagen fibers run perhaps in a more of a haphazard fashion there. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a preview as to what to expect here. We're getting uh, in terms of maybe like a practical component of uh, the assessment that will be coming up here. So for my online students, that assessment will open up on uh, the 22nd of September. So it'll open up on the 22nd of September. It'll stay open until Monday of that weekend so the 25th and for my in-person students that test will be taken on the 26th right so again we've got the histology component and then chapter five next week is what we'll be looking at chapter five is the integumentary system so the first system that we'll be looking at obviously uh, the system related to your skin hair and nails so the tissue most closely associated with skin, particularly the epidermal layers of the skin and the layers of your hair as well as your hair and nails is stratified squamous epithelium. Stratified squamous epithelium. Uh, again, remember that epithelium is mostly closely associated with the uh, type of tissue that lines the inside and outside of my body and now stratified squamous epithelium multiple layers and it, in this case it's keratinized meaning there's a protein called keratin which helps to give it a little bit of its toughness right as well as that durability that we see within the integumentary system uh, let's see let me see what I got here uh, here, maybe this is kind of gives us an idea. Uh, what you'll see in the integumentary system here is that first you'll see that there's a number of different layers into the epidermis, and we'll get over that. We'll go over that here uh, over the next weeks. But you'll see that there's a couple of layers within the epidermis. Uh, so there's one, two, three four and then the fifth layer is just like the first kind of row of cells so you've got five layers in some cases uh in most cases there's five layers and then the uh 
dermis is within the epidermis and then the dermis sits lower than that or deeper than that in which case uh, there is connective tissue so whereas the epidermis is comprised of stratified squamous epithelium the dermis is comprised of connective tissue there so some of those uh, differences in tissues are going to arise when we look at the integumentary system so we'll look forward to all those things here in the near future but i just want to uh, encourage you guys as you continue on in here in the semester uh, to continue on as you are uh, you guys are doing great work throughout this semester here I appreciate everything that you're doing uh, so again the key here we're looking at histology many of you have been going through the histology lab and the next week we'll be looking at the integumentary system which is comprised of primarily connective tissue and stratified squamous epithelium those two types of tissues But I will, I'll keep it brief again for you guys here. Um, if there's any ever any questions, comments, concerns, send them to my email. I can address them here publicly or uh, privately. Again, I appreciate all your guys' time and wish you guys the best. I look forward to all your responses here throughout the semester. Take care and stay well.